In this video we'll show how to develop the project a little further, expanding on what we already have. In the last session I've built the project up to strike scaffold so I'm now going to start adding in the internals for my building. First of all I might just delete these annotations that are on display. So I'm going to go up to the format tab and click the annotations button to hide those items. Now to start creating new tasks, normally I would just type into the spreadsheet or table, give a duration and a task would show up on the bar chart and I'd create additional tasks as required. However, for my internals I've got multiple activities that are going to be happening in the same location and Power Project supports this really well by letting us show multiple tasks on a line. So. I've got various activities that need to be done for my internals. I'm going to say there's you know, ceilings, carpentry, electrics or plumbing and plaster and, and things like that. So I'm, I'm going to draw four tasks onto the line there. And I can come over here to the table and I can call all the tasks on that line apartment one. Now to name the task specifically, I can click on the little plus sign next to the line number and give each task a specific name too. So that's carpentry, let's say plumbing and plaster. So just four tasks in this case. When I roll them up, they're all shown on the same line. And if I want to link these into the rest of my project, I might just draw a link from my milestone to the first task on the line there. And when I reschedule, they are all going to run consecutively. You see the critical path showing on those. Now, it's a little bit difficult to differentiate the different tasks. So what I will use is my code libraries to assign a different code to each of the tasks. That's going to make it easier for me to recognize them. So from the trade contractors library, I'm going to find the, the ceilings here, the ceilings contractor, and then the carpentry contractor and the plumbing. I'm just dragging and dropping these onto the activities just like we've done in the past. So each of those tasks now has a unique appearance that is helping me to identify it. I might have multiple apartments in my building so what I'm going to do now is simply copy this line. So I can come on a right click or I can go up to the ribbon and copy. And when it comes to pasting, I'm going to click the drop down arrow and choose to paste and retain the links. And that's going to allow me to paste multiple times but keep the links in place there. So I've got three schedules of work, one for each apartment with links coming from the milestone into each. If I come over here to the table I can name these now more specifically so I've got apartment 2 and apartment 3. And finally I'll create a handover milestone. Let's just take that over there and I'm now going to link each of these apartments into the milestone because if any of these apartments were delayed that would affect the handover date of my project. One final reschedule and that's how things look. The next thing I'm going to do in this project is to add a structure to the work. and I. The next thing I'm going to do is add a structure to my project work. And I do this in Power Project by grouping related activities together under a summary. If I highlight by clicking and dragging on the line numbers here, my first two tasks, come up to the ribbon, to the hierarchy section and click summarize, a summary bar appears on the bar chart. Now if I call this site establishment, you can see that the roll-up information is displayed, so the phase as a whole is taking me four weeks. And the summary bar sits here 
on the bar chart. If I repeat that for my next group of activities, that will be my substructure. And down here, that will be superstructure. Great, and I might just pop that handover out of the summary. So now I can see different phases of work through my project. This is easier then for me to, to understand and track the project. And it's easier to communicate it with other people. I can double click on one of these summaries to roll up the information and just see the top level details. I can do that individually or I can use the show to level button and drop everything down in one go. If I move over to my project view on the left hand side, I can see my work breakdown structure shown here and I can navigate to display any part of the project at one time on the screen. Or to show more than one part of a project, I can hold my control button. Click on program to display the whole project. Now, when we're working on a project, there may be certain activities that are causing delays or could potentially be completed sooner. I'm going to introduce calendars at this point. And as you can see here in the project view, there are multiple calendars available and Power Project supports the use of multiple calendars in a project. So if I wanted to save some time on my project, I may consider working seven days a week instead of five days a week. That might only be applicable to certain tasks or trades. So for example, my piling task here, I might try and save some time and get that to finish earlier by assigning the seven day week calendar to that task. And I've done that by just clicking and dragging like we've done in the past. As you see, working seven days a week, that task has got shorter. And if I reschedule the project, that will bring my end date back in time. So by usable multiple calendars on a program, we can mitigate possible delays that are creeping in. And I could use that as a what if scenario so I can easily undo to put things back as they were. The last thing I want to show you in this video is a buffer task. The scenario that I'm going to use to show the use of a buffer task is that this handover date this could be my target handover, but I might want to give myself a little bit of extra time between that and a client handover. So if I create a couple of extra milestones in here, and that first one is my target handover, I'm going to give myself a three week buffer before the client handover date. And I'm going to link these activities together by just selecting them going up to the add delete links option and choosing to link tasks and that puts finish to start links between those tasks for me. So a buffer task will work a little bit like float. So this is the extra time that I've got before this needs to be done. At the moment this is just a normal task so I need to make it into a buffer. I right click and select from the menu. In order to keep this three week duration and protect this end date, I do need to add a flag to that end date. Without the flag, when I reschedule, the float would be consumed and we would be back where we were at the beginning. So we do need to constrain that milestone with a flag. And now when I reschedule, that is planned into the project, that three week buffer protecting the end date. Now, if I show, um, I've shown you how to save some time on a program, but what happens if we want to see the effect of a delay now? Let's look at our ground slab and let's imagine that that takes us longer than we thought. Let's increase that to 10 days. I'll reschedule the project and notice how that eats into the buffer. The buffer duration reduces. Although the target handover has moved, the client handover date is protected. So although we're slipping, we still have time to make changes and try and get that time back.
This is a situation where you could work extra hours and apply the seven day week calendar as I showed you before to try and mitigate that delay. Again, you may choose to do this to see what if scenarios. We can undo the changes just as easily with the undo button.